everyone, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small, and welcome to the Medium Tank Olympics. This Medium Tank Showdown, we're going to look at three tanks that the uh, main powers have provided for today's competition. The Americans have submitted an M4 Sherman from the American D-Day book. The Soviets have submitted a Hero T-3485 from the Soviet Bagration book while the Germans have submitted a Panzer IV from the uh, D-Day SS book. So all of our tanks are basically hit on threes, so we have that level playing field. This particular video, we're going to be looking at each vehicle in turn. We're going to be comparing several areas, uh, like motivation, skill, and armor. And we're going to come up with a score, and we're going to rank them at the end. We also are going to be having part two, where we're going to be putting these tanks through the uh, Olympic courses. So we're going to have several competitions for these tanks to perform in, and we're going to see if the dice align with what our uh, numerical rating is going to be. And I will state up front that uh, any uh, opinion I come up with is, again, purely subjective. This, I have a feeling, could open a big can of worms. Everyone's got their favorite tank. And usually a lot of times it's if I'm playing Americans, I think the other guys have better stuff. If I'm playing Germans, I think the, the Americans have better stuff. If I'm playing Soviets, I think everybody else has better stuff. So again, it can be subjective. But what we can do is look at the stats, uh, and those can't be argued about how valuable each stat is. That's where um, the, you know the subjectivity comes into play. All right, let's start by taking a look at the Sherman 76. The Sherman 76, we'll start with the what I'm going to term as more soft scores. So the Sherman 76 has a motivation setting of confident 4 plus. But it does have some special rules. It has protected ammo, so it remounts on a 3 plus, and a blood and guts last stand 3 plus check as well. So while the motivation is 4 plus, uh, the remount is better and the last stand is better and, and those are two of the really important things and getting to three plus is, is really good. Skill is uh, just a four plus. There's no special rules that go with skill, just skill is four plus. And uh, just to remind you, skill is used for things like um, hitting an assault, for example. And next up we have the tank is hit on a three plus aggressive. All of our tanks in this tank showdown are hit on a three plus. Now we're getting at some of the harder um, stats, and that is like armor. So a Sherman 76 has a front armor of seven, which is the highest front armor of all of our uh, subjects today. It has a side armor of four, which is about in the middle of the pack. The T-34-85 has better side armor, the Panzer IV worse. And then a top of one, which all these medium tanks share. Speed-wise, we have a tactical speed of 10, a terrain dash of 12, a cross-country dash of 18, and a road dash of 20. The Sherman 76 has a cross-check rating of 3+. plus, So two-thirds of the time, it's going to cross any barrier. Weapons-wise, I think the Sherman 76 has the best weapon of all of the uh, contenders today. The 76 millimeter gun has a range of 36 inches, which is the farthest ranging gun in our showdown. It has a halted and moving rate of fire of 2, anti-tank 12, 3 plus firepower. Now it does have the notes no HE and stabilizer. Uh, the first no HE is a big penalty, and if you're not familiar with the no HE rule, it means that it is one harder to hit uh, gun and infantry teams. The Sherman 76 is obviously set up as a vehicle killer, a tank killer. Stabilizer is an American rule that basically lets the tank shoot at its full uh, rate of fire, its halted rate of fire while moving, but at a penalty. So it has a moving rate of fire of two, but if it shoots on the move, uh, it's going to be one harder to hit. Now in uh, previous versions this was a, a choice the American player had. You could fire one shot 
uh, normally on the move, or you could fire two shots with your stabilizer at a one harder to hit. Um, so the, the score needed to hit would be one higher. But in version four, this current version, that's just baked into the rules. You are always using your uh, stabilizer. So you always have a rate of fire of two moving, and it's always going to be plus one to hit. The Sherman also is equipped with the most machine guns out of everybody. It has a 50 cal machine gun as well as two 30 cal machine guns. Game wise, that gives a, a 50 cal rating of uh, three shots halted, two shots on the move, anti tank four, five plus firepower, and self defense AA. And then regular machine guns, which give two shots on the move or halted and it's standard machine gun stats, anti-tank 2, uh, firepower 6. The other thing to note is the Sherman, uh, the 50 cal on the Sherman is also 20 inch range. All 50 cals have a 20 inch range, which is four more inches than a standard machine gun at 16 inches. So those are the stats for the uh, Sherman 76. All right, the Panzer IV, we've got uh, basically this is, again, out of the D-Day Waffen SS book. And that's why we're doing a, a hit on three, you know, Panzer IV. Okay, so the soft scores, we have motivation. It's fearless, three plus, with a protected ammo remount of two plus. So that protected ammo remount of two plus is huge um, because if you bail out this tank instead of destroying it, it more than likely it's just gonna the crew's going to get back in and it's going to be fine next turn. You really need to destroy uh, these tanks to, to ensure that they're not there um, shooting at you the next turn. They have a skill of 4+, plus. and again skill is used for things like assaults, uh, hitting an assault. And then it is hit on 3+, uh, plus aggressive, just like the other tanks. Armor wise, it has a front armor of 6, a side armor of 3, and a top armor of 1. So the front armor is equal to the uh, T-3485, um, it's one worse than the Sherman, but the side armor is the worst of, of all of these tanks at uh, 3, side armor 3. Uh, the Sherman has a 4, the T-3485 has a 5 on the side. The Panzer IV does have bazooka skirts, which can help mitigate some of that uh, poor side armor, so if it's a hit by a uh, weapon with a firepower of 5 plus or worse, so 5 plus or 6 plus, like a bazooka for example, uh, we treat the side as 5 instead of 3, so it, it jumps up to uh, T-3485 territory. But again, that only works against firepower 5 plus or worse weapons, so an, another tank shooting into the flank of the Panzer IV, it's, it's uh, a done deal, but again, bazooka shots are RPGs. Um, those are going to increase it to five, which might give it the ability to bounce um, some some of those shots. Then let's talk about the speed. The Panzer IV has a tactical of ten, terrain dash of twelve, country uh, cross country dash of eighteen, and a road dash of twenty. It also has a cross check of three plus, just like the Sherman. Weapon-wise, the uh, Panzer IV has a 7.5 centimeter gun which is a, with a 32 inch range, halted rate of fire of 2, moving rate of fire of 1, anti-tank 11, and 3 plus firepower. There are no notes for this gun, so it is not penalized by anything like no HE, for example. It does have the um, lowest anti-tank value of any of the tanks we're looking at today. But it comes in uh, second place as far as range goes, 32 inch range. Not quite as good as the Sherman, but does outrange its Soviet counterpart. Also, the Panzer IV is rocking uh, four machine gun shots, whether moving or halted. And those are standard 16 inch anti-tank two, six plus firepower uh, weapons. So there you go, that's a look at the Panzer IV's stats. Last up in our showdown, we have the T-3485. This is out of the Soviet Bagration book. The soft scores for this give us a motivation of four plus. There are no special rules for that motivation. So it is um, not only bailing back in on a four, it is 
uh, a platoon checking or a company checking on a four plus as well to see if it sticks around on the table and so on. It has a skill of four plus, but it does have the special rule crafty tactics three plus. Uh, a tactics rating, a better tactics rating is helpful for doing movement rules, for example. That means you're going to get a three plus uh, blitz check, which is going to be better than the four plus for the Sherman and the four plus for the Panzer IV. Just like all the tanks, it's hit on a three plus, it's aggressive. The armor layout is front armor six, side armor five, top armor one. So the front armor is equal to the uh, Panzer IV. The side armor is the best of the batch at five, and the top armor again is one, which everyone has. Tactical speed, tactical is 12, terrain dash is 16, cross country dash is 24, and road dash is 28. So it is um, significantly better than its other two counterparts. With the um, tactical of 12, it by base is just going two inches faster than the other tanks, which is very, very handy. Um, it also has a cross check of two plus, which is again, really big and better than the other two uh, vehicles. All right, uh, then we have the weapons. So the T-34 is equipped with an 85 millimeter gun. It has a range of 28 inches. Halted uh, rate of fire is two, moving is one, anti-tank 12, three plus firepower. The, uh, the gun has no notes, so there is um, no, no HE, for example, no stabilizer. So again, this gun is just as effective against infantry and gun teams as it is against other tanks. Uh, T-34-85 also comes with uh, machine guns. It, has the same exact layout as the Panzer IV. It's four shots, whether halted or moving. Anti-tank two, firepower six, with a 16 inch range, which is just pretty much standard stats for these uh, uh, 30 cal kind of uh, hull mounted machine guns that these tanks have. All right, so that's a look at the stats for our three contenders today. All right, so let's talk about those soft scores first and who has the best uh, soft score out of these tanks. And again, it's gonna be a tough one. The, uh, starting with the Panzer IV there, um, the motivation is, is really good. With a three plus fearless motivation, um, that's better than the confident that uh, these two guys have. The two plus remount is also best of class. So that, that's really good. So for motivation, it's easily um, the Panzer IV coming in first, the Second place for motivation is going to be, I believe, the Americans because the um, T-34 only has a four-up motivation across the board, whereas the American has a four-up motiv uh, motivation, but it does have a better remount and a better last stand check. So in this case, for uh, the motivation, we are going to give it to the uh, Panzer IV, then the Sherman, then the T-34. Next, we're gonna look at skill. So the Panzer IV has a skill of four plus just across the board. The T-3485 has a four plus across the board, but a three plus tactics. So again, that's gonna help with cross checks, any, any kind of movement order, things like that. The American has a, a skill of four plus. So really it's the, um, when it comes to skill, the T-34 takes it in first place and the Sherman and the Panzer are tied for second place. All right, uh, they're all hit on three plus, so we don't need to compare that. Next up we have the armor layout scheme. So we've got, if you remember, uh, seven, four, and one, seven front, four side, top one. We have six, five, and one, and we have six, three, and one with bazooka skirts, which um, can help out again against those lower firepower or worse firepower weapons like bazookas. So I think it is uh, you know, subjective. I'm gonna give it to the Sherman for armor because I think front armor seven is huge, uh, particularly when you're facing um, 
uh, anti-tank 11, anti-tank 12. It actually gives you a save, the possibility to save and bounce, uh, and uh, that's really important. Whereas front armor 6 is uh, not, not quite as good. So I'm going to give the, uh, the best uh, armor to the Sherman, followed by the T-3485. That side armor 5 is just really nice natively and front armor 6. Uh, and then the uh, Panzer 4 can get up to front armor 5 in, in some circumstances, but otherwise it's hobbled with side armor 3, which against flanking shots means even something like a lowly Stuart with an anti-tank uh, value of 7 could really threaten a Panzer IV, whereas anti-tank 7 versus a, a, a 5 is not quite as scary, no, nowhere near as scary. So for armor layout, it's going to be American, Sherman, Soviet T-34, and then the last place is our Panzer IV. All right, next up we're going to talk about speed. Uh, the speed line, it, it's going to be pretty easy. The T-3485 takes it. Basically the T-3485 has light tank stats as far as its movement, um, where the Americans and the Germans are only going 10 inches tactical, the T-3485 is going 12. And it just gets better, you know, on the road dash for a T-34 is 28 inches, whereas the Sherman and the uh, T-30, uh, sorry, the Sherman and the Pans are only going 20 on the road. The other thing in the, uh, the, the T-34's favor is a two plus cross check, which is huge, going from three plus to two plus is, is really big. Um, so the T-34-85 could literally run circles around um, around its competitors. Otherwise, uh, speed-wise or movement distance-wise and cross-check-wise, the Sherman and the Panzer are the uh, same. So we're going to give it uh, first place to our T-3485 and then tied for second place is going to be our Sherman and our Panzer IV. Alright, next up is weapons. This is probably going to be the most subjective. So we've got a great anti-tank 12 gun on both the T-3485 and the Sherman, whereas the Panzer IV is only rocking an AT-11 gun. So by default, it looks like the Panzer IV is going to fall into third place, at least at first glance. So between the two guns uh, in the Soviet and the American tank, We've got the same um, anti-tank rating, so what else can we compare? Well, range. The Sherman has a 36 inch range, best in class with these tanks, versus a paltry 28, and I do say paltry, 28 inch range for the T-34. And here the, uh, the Panzer does make a comeback with a 32 inch range, so we actually have like four inch, you know, this one outranges the Panzer 4 by 4 inches, the Panzer 4 outranges the T-34 by 4 inches. So range-wise uh, is a huge thing for the Americans. Um, the firepower is all the same, so that, that's um, a given. Now there are some stats to s before we can declare the American the victor in who has the best gun, and that's the penalties and advantages of the gun. The, this gun and this gun, they don't have any, any notes, they don't have any special rules that impact how they work in the game, but the Sherman 76 does, and so we have to take that into account. So the first one is no HE, and no HE means, again, plus one to hit, uh, or it's pl pl one harder to hit infantry and gun teams. Shooting at tanks, no penalty, but shooting against, um, you know, pack 40s, infantry with your main gun it's one harder to hit them and that is pretty huge particularly if you're shooting at veteran Germans where you know you might go from a five needing a five or a six to it needing a six or a seven and that's just a huge uh, shift that's a huge shift so the no HE rule is a big handicap but the other rule they have is stabilizer and that's uh, the Sherman's the only tank here that has stabilizer and it, that means it's the only tank that can fire twice on the move. All right, so while I do think the no HE is a big, big handicap to the Sherman, 
I don't think it outweighs the stabilizer, uh, the benefits of stabilizer. Um, some people might call it a wash, some people might uh, think no HE is bigger, but again, it's subjective. Um, no HE is huge if you're fighting an infantry gun line that has very few tanks. Um, if you're fighting an all tank army, who cares? Your, your, your tank is now going to be even better. So, you know, the value is subjective based on what you're facing. So I'm going to give the gun to the um, Sherman, the main gun, the, uh, followed up by the, the um, T-3485 and then the Panzer IV. I would say almost that the Panzer IV and the uh, T-3485 are almost neck and neck. Um, the anti-tank 11 you have here is counterbalanced by the four extra inches of range. So a savvy German player can set it up so that they get uh, a shot off at the T-34 and require the T-34 to get closer before it can return fire. Second place, the T-3485, and third place, the Panzer IV. So here we have the scorecard. In third place, with nine points, we have the Panzer IV, SS Panzer IV. In second place, with 11 points, we have the T-3485. And in first place, with 12 points, we have the M4 Sherman. And basically, I pointed up each one of the categories we looked at, motivation, skill, armor, movement, and weapons, and assigned three points to the winner, two points to second place, one point for last place. So hopefully I got my points right. But the uh, M4 is the winner with the T-34 right behind, and then the uh, Panzer IV somewhat lagging uh, up <laughs> uh, in last place. So again, everyone's going to have their personal opinion, their personal take on this, and some people are going to feel maybe I undervalued the Panzer IV, or overvalued the Sherman, or didn't value the Sherman enough. And that's fair, everyone's gonna have their own opinion. Everyone tends to play the game a little bit differently. But um, I, I think that's pretty accurate once I looked at the points and my, my personal feelings about these tanks. Um, it pretty much uh, is in line. So the last thing we'll do in this part is just my, my final thoughts on this. And then in part two of this video, we're gonna have the, the fun, we're gonna have all three of these tanks compete in some real-world gameplay on the tabletop and uh, see which one comes out in our tank Olympics. See if our, our point system holds up or if the fickle dice gods uh, have something else to say. But before that, I will talk about the fact that the Panzer IV um, kind of comes out pretty much in last place in a lot of areas. Uh, the this. This particular version is coming out of the SS book, and I feel Battlefront points the uh, that motivation skill pretty uh, the the really good motivation high. I, I think they give that a lot of weight in as far as how they point these vehicles. Because again, in game they're all the same points. Three of these tanks are 13. I think four of them are 18 points each. Um, so if you take four of them, that's like what's that? Like 4.5 points per tank. Um, but otherwise, um, you know, I'm not sure besides just factoring in the fact that the motivation is so much better for the Panzer, um, why it um, is pointed the way it would be. You know, if, if this Panzer was half a point cheaper, I, I think I would be okay with that um, as far as having to face them. Because uh, you're really, that's really not getting you a lot more. Maybe you can squeeze in another support platoon or something if you take a lot of them. But... Um, it is something to, to consider. So I'm, I'm just curious what you guys think about that as far as, um, you know, the value. The other thing is I did consider doing a, a, a Stug instead of a Panzer IV in this competition, but I wanted it to keep it to medium tanks and not assault guns. Uh, the Stug is obviously superior to the Panzer IV, but it is a, a little bit uh, more expensive. One thing I will say in the Panzer IV's favor, though, this SS version, the 2 plus remount, is awesome. Um, I think that's so uh, such a good thing, particularly when you're fighting three up firepower. Um, 
33% of the time when your tank's penetrated, it's going to be bailed out. And a 2 plus, you're probably going to be getting in. If you have your company HQ nearby giving you a reroll for that, you're almost definitely getting in with a 2 up rerollable. So there is something to be said for that. So there you go guys, that's part one of my medium tank showdown. Please do be on the lookout for part two where we're going to have the medium tank Olympics and you're going to see these guys in action and some of these tanks are going to be commanded by uh, my daughters. They're, they're going to go against me and we're going to see what happens. It'll be pretty, <laughs> pretty fun. Also, uh, please do check us out on Facebook at All Miniatures Great and Small. Uh, we just opened an Instagram account, uh, so we do want to have a presence on Instagram. So there is a link. I'll put it down in the description below. I would appreciate it if you hop over there and uh, subscribe if you wanted to. And uh, we don't have a lot posted, obviously, but uh, we tend to post, or we intend to post pretty pictures and updates and things like that on there as well trying to increase our social media presence if you will uh, also we always appreciate a like and subscribe here click that bell to receive notification to receive uh, when we release new content that is and uh, if you like our flames of war content and want more please do check out our patreon patrons get access to an exclusive battle report just for them every month and we do also provide early access to youtube videos as well all right, guys, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, be on the lookout for part two. Thanks for watching, and keep on wargaming.